My name is Sarah. I work at Wonder Lab in Bloomington, Indiana. I've already seen we have people from other states on with us today, which is very exciting. So let's get to our science activity today. In honor of Chrysanthemum's namesake, a flower, we are going to be making some water blossoms. So once we make our water blossoms, we're gonna talk about two important terms. Absorption and osmosis. Osmosis is a word you might not have heard as frequently as absorption. So let's clap out osmosis together. Osmosis, osmosis. And we're gonna talk about what those words mean in a minute. I am gonna set you all back to make water blossoms. I'm going to show you what you need and I'm going to be posting the supplies that you'll need afterwards on Facebook. So don't worry about hurrying to get them now. You'll need some water soluble markers. You'll need an oil based ink pen. You'll need some scissors, be safe. And you'll need some paper, easy enough. The first thing you're going to do to make your water blossom is cut your paper into a square. Next, we're gonna fold it up so that we can easily cut it into a flower. I have a square piece of paper here and I'm gonna fold it like a triangle half of a sandwich. It reminds me of a grilled cheese half. Then I'm gonna fold it again into an even smaller triangle. Then even smaller. <laughs> I have this itty bitty triangle now and I'm gonna take my scissors Make sure my marker doesn't roll away. Boop. And I'm gonna cut the corners off of my paper into the shape of a petal. So I'll hold it close for you to see. I'm holding my corner at the bottom. Snip and down, snip. Now I have what looks like a single petal, but I am going to unfold that now. And now I have a nice, even, beautiful flower. So before we do our experiment, we need to do a few things with our flower. The first thing we're gonna do is use markers to color one side in. And then on the white side of the paper, you can color it however you choose with your markers. On the white side, we're gonna draw a design with a black ink pen. So I'm gonna show you an already finished flower of mine. Here is one that I colored in blue. And on the back, I have my design. And your design on the back with the black ink can be as fancy or simple as you like. Now that we have our flowers, and I encourage you to make a few of them, you're going to need a shallow dish. Any glass baking dish will be great. I'm putting mine on a white piece of paper because we're going to want to see something that's happening in here. Next you're gonna want some just regular plain old water. And you're gonna go ahead and pour a small amount into your shallow dish. You don't need very much, not even a half inch. Now, I'm gonna take my flower and fold the petals in so that it looks like this. The ink is on the inside and the petals are folded in. And then I'm going to set my folded flower. Oh, I see something interesting. Do we have to do this? It's going to bleed through. I like that observation and that concern. I like where you're thinking. We're gonna actually see what happens. And I wanna call for some hypotheses of what you think is gonna happen when I put this flower in the water. And I'm not gonna do it yet because I wanna hear what you think first. Scientists make hypotheses first. So does anybody have any ideas? Let's see. Uh, Jude in the chat, who's three, thinks it will float. All right. Hmm. And Sophia from Michigan, thanks for coming down to Bloomington with us this morning. Um, hers just moved. She thinks the marker is going to spread out and tie dye. Ooh. So that's an interesting thing to remember is that is thinking about what happens with tie dyeing and what will happen today. You might be thinking about one of our terms we're going to talk about here 
uh, that made me think about absorption and what will absorb and what won't. Mm -hmm. I also see just a few more things. I have somebody, Max from Ohio, he thinks it will float. Uh, Aaron thinks that the ink will spread in the water. So we've got a ton of hypotheses. Interesting. You noticed I had a couple different colors on there and you think that they'll mix together. Yeah. All right. Interesting hypothesis. Okay. Let's go ahead and drop it in and see what happens. I picked a different flower. This one is blue. I folded in the petals and I'm going to drop it in and let's see what happens. We're going to give it another second and watch what happens. I see somebody said cool in the chat. I agree. I think it's really cool. <laughs> so what happened? Can somebody tell me an observation they made just now? What, what happened? Nora said, oh, wow. Agree. Yeah. Very cool. It was going to wash off a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Like, did you think we would have blue and green water? Yeah. So. Okay. It's a little hard to see right now. And once you do this activity at home, you'll notice as time goes on, I can see a little bit of that blue ink spreading in the water. And I'm going to move my flower a little bit so you can all see it better. Does everybody see that now? Oh, there we go. So it takes a little bit of time, but you're right. That color is spreading there. That's an interesting observation. It opened <laughs> up. <laughs> That's great. That's actually a really great description of the feeling that goes along when you see something like that happen. Thank you. That is a great question. It was closed when it wasn't in the water and then it opened in the water. Does anybody have a guess as to why they think that happened? I like the way you're thinking. Yeah, I see um, Jack is also asking that same question. And I see some people, somebody saying it's magic. And even though it seems magical, it's not magic, it's science, right, Sarah? That's right. Yeah. So I'm gonna go back to that vocabulary word that we brought up earlier to help us along in understanding what happened when we put the flower in the water and why it opened, why, why? Osmosis. And I'm gonna ask you all to say that again with me and we're gonna clap it out. Osmosis, osmosis. And I see somebody saying, because the water goes into the paper, Earlier, I saw somebody mention osmosis in the chat, and you're all thinking about that. The water is going into the paper. When we put the paper in the water, it's dry. Osmosis, in this case, is when water is going from the area of highest concentration, which would be the water in our dish, and it's trying to create balance. It's very concentrated with water over here in the dish, and our paper is dry and is not, has a low concentration. Water naturally tries to create that balance. And because of what paper is made of, paper is made of trees. It's made of plant fiber. That plant fiber wants to soak up water. And so osmosis occurs. The water soaks into the plant fibers in the paper and expands. And that causes those leaves to open up and unfold. So I have a few questions. I had to do a lot of experimenting when I did this, believe it or not. I am a trained scientist and you're all scientists as well, but part of being a scientist is experimenting and figuring things out. I made a flower with a different kind of paper and I'm going to put it in the water. This paper is slightly thicker than the paper that I used for this flower. Does anybody have any predictions of what they think will happen if I use slightly thicker paper? Ah, you think it will take longer for osmosis to occur. Interesting observation. I love how you used our new vocab word. So I have another experiment we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, we have a few more hands. Yeah, we have a few more. I want to ask you a question, though. Why do you think it will take longer? All right, I'm going to drop it in. I'm eager to see what happens. And I have one more too. We're going to change another variable and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But let's start with our slightly thicker paper. Here we go.
sometimes science takes patience. <laughs> I see it happening now. I see something happening. So I just mentioned the word variables. As we watch, I want to talk about that. Whenever you do an experiment, there's a lot of variables. In this case, we just talked about one of the variables, which was the weight and type of paper. There's a lot of other variables in this experiment, though, and a lot of other ways that you could see what would work differently if you changed those variables. Let's see, it said, Lucy has an interesting hypothesis. What did Lucy think? Lucy thought that the, the, um, the petals would actually spread more and mm -hmm. spread bigger. And so, which is a really interesting hypothesis, thinking that something that has, that's thicker has more material, right? It has a greater mass. And so it would make, it's, it's an interesting hypothesis to think that therefore it would, it would spread larger, or the petals would be bigger. That is interesting. Yeah. So slowly but surely, I see those petals opening. Now I notice something different between this flower and this flower. Does anybody see, does anybody want to talk about the differences they saw and maybe the differences they see between the two right now? It does seem to be taking longer. Thank you. The color isn't leaking through. And right. over here in this flower, the color is not leaking through. And over here, the color did leak through. The water is very blue right now. If I move my flower a little, you'll see some more of the color from the other flower. But the color doesn't seem to be leaking to the top of the flower. You said something very interesting there, whether they're touching the water or not. So these petals do seem to be on the flower that has not, color has not bled through yet. It seems like the water is not coming up to the top of the petals, doesn't it? Is exactly what we talked about with that word, Thanks, osmosis. Thank you so much. The water, because it's thicker and there's more fibers, somebody had that interesting hypothesis earlier, because there's more fibers in the thicker paper, it is taking longer for osmosis to occur. Slowly but surely, if you leave this activity out, it will start to seep in no matter the thickness of the water. The black ink isn't spreading, but the color is. And that has to do with diffusion. Diffusion is what tells us if something is gonna diffuse in the water or not. Our water-based marker spread into the water because they were alike. Our oil-based ink didn't. I wonder what would happen if instead of water-based markers, we used crayons to color our flower. Yeah. I have a paper towel flower here, but I'm not gonna drop it in because I want all of you to be the scientists that you are and experiment with this at home. All you need are these supplies, paper towel, different types of paper. I'd suggest some other variables you could change. What if you put the flowers in milk? What if you put them in vegetable oil? There's so many different things you could try and I'll be posting on Facebook after this class and I welcome you all. I'll post the materials and instructions for how to do the experiment. And I would really love to see from all of you pictures of your experiments or written observations. So ask your caregiver to log on to Facebook with you and share with the rest of your fellow scientists what you see um, and definitely try the paper towel flower I wonder what would happen with that. What if you used a liquid that was acidic, like white vinegar? Ooh! Might that be an interesting variable to change? Yes, absolutely. I've been thinking about very base liquids. That would be great. I encourage you all to try that as well. Nice. Well, thank you so much. We had so many people on our class today. I love that even though we're all far apart, we can still come together and experiment and learn together. It's important for me. I live alone here with my dog and I love seeing all of your faces. So thank you so much for coming out and experimenting with us. Please share your results and your thoughts on that Facebook post later today.